So outside of the world of functional neurology, there's almost no one thinking clinically about the relationship between the vestibular system and the autonomic system, especially in cases that have orthostatic intolerance. So these would be people that have things like POTS, uh, orthostatic hypotension, cerebral hypoperfusion, problems where when they move from a resting, seated, laying down position to standing up, they feel all the symptoms that would be relative to blood not being able to get into your head. So things like lightheadedness, dizziness, brain fog, um, not a fun way to go. So what's interesting about that, if we back it up and we think about, all right, what would have to be intact to go from laying down to standing up so that we can deliver blood flow to the head? Like that's the big question. So first thing you have to consider is that blood flow changes when you're laying down versus when you're standing up. When you're laying down, your heart doesn't have to push very hard to push sideways to push blood into your head. But when you stand up, your head is over your heart. Now I have to create, I have to know, first of all, that my head is above my heart. And if I know that, I have to send signals to the vascular system through the autonomic system to increase the tension in the blood vessels so that fluid can get pushed up to the head against gravity. So if we think about people that are very interested in gravity and the effects that it has on cerebral blood flow, we can think about the people at NASA. And they came out with a paper in, way back in 2009, not new, um, looking at the effects of the vestibular system on cerebral blood flow. If we just quickly cut to the chase and look at the conclusion here, you can see when they activated the vestibular system, specifically the otolithic organs, so the otolithic organs are the ones that detect where your head is in space all the time. They use kind of gravity as the main sensor that allows us to be able to understand the position of our head wherever we are in space. Understanding the position of your head is a prerequisite for being able to send blood to it. And what they found was when they stimulated the otolithic organs, it directly affected cerebral blood flow. And it did that independent of whatever their, their blood pressure was, whatever their kind of breathing rate was relative to end tidal carbon dioxide. And that's a really big finding. And it happened way back in 2009 because it looks at these brain regions here and it helps us understand how they influence the control of blood flow throughout the brain. So if we go back and think about our patients that have problems with these orthostatic challenges, and we think about how we normally test them, usually autonomic tests are kind of done on an island. So you go to the autonomic lab, you do the autonomic tests, and you get the autonomic report, yeah? And I think that's a brilliant test strategy, but also it doesn't take into account all of these other systems that are involved in regulating the autonomic system, particularly relative to the vestibular system. So very few workups are done where we do an in-depth autonomic workup and then overlay that with an in-depth vestibular workup. Because a lot of times what we find is when there are errors in otolithic processing, we see that correlate with the findings we have in our autonomic assessments. And what's even more important is that when we do things that improve that otolithic function, with that processing improves, we understand where our head is in space better. We see that translate back to the autonomic testing through increased cerebral blood flow outcomes, people feeling less dizzy, people feeling less lightheaded, and able to progress into other phases of care where we can increase endurance, we can increase strength, get them back into normal life situations again. So there's this very high correlate that we look at, but unfortunately, a lot of times, there's not a lot of clinical activity looking at that correlate. So if you're a practitioner, if you're a patient, and this is something that you're interested in or something that you're dealing with, remembering to look at that autonomic system with its other involved processes helps us understand what is causing that autonomic problem in the first place. And then we can work backwards from there to solve for it to be able to get it to work appropriately again so that we can get back to life again. So I hope that helps. Please leave some feedback. It helps me understand 
how best to serve you. At the end of the day, we want to help people that don't feel well, that have these neurological symptoms, be able to get their lives back. This is how we hope to be able to do it. So thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.